What if I told you that the speed of light may have been mentioned accurately thousands of years before modern science existed? Not guessed, not imagined, but expressed using defined units of time and distance. And what if I told you that a scholar living in the 14th century calculated that speed? And modern physics centuries later arrived at almost the same number. The difference? Less than 1%. Sounds unbelievable? Stay with me. Because we are going to place only attested facts, texts, and numbers, and let you decide how mind-boggling this really is. Setting the claim. Around 3,700 years ago, a hymn of the Rig Veda spoke of light, its brilliance, its reach, its swiftness. 700 years ago, a revered scholar named Sayana commented on that very hymn and recorded a numerical statement about light's motion. He never knew that modern science would one day vindicate that number. Let us dive deep. The Rigvedic Root At least 3,700 years ago, Rigveda Hymn 1.50.4 was composed by the sage Praskanva, also known as Kanva. The hymn is addressed to Surya, the sun, the source of light and cosmic order. The verse says, Taranir Vishvadarshato Jyotish Kridasi Surya Vishvam A Bhasi Rochanam. You, O Surya, outstrip all in speed. You are visible to all. You are the source of light. You shine across the entire luminous world. This is poetry, not physics. But notice something important. Speed is already implied. Light is described as swift, all-reaching, universal. Enter Sayana. Now we move to the 14th century. Sayanacharya, one of the most respected commentators of the Rig Veda, was born in the early 1300s. His monumental work, Vedartha Prakasha, is still considered the most authoritative traditional commentary on the Vedas. Modern scholars continue to rely on him. And while explaining Rig Veda 1.50.4, Sayana writes something extraordinary. It is remembered that the sun's light travels 2,202 yojanas in half a nimisha. It is remembered. This is crucial. Sayana is not claiming discovery. He is recording smriti, remembered knowledge. Units exist. This is key. For such a statement to exist, the units themselves must already exist. And they do. Indian texts clearly record time units as early as the Vedanga Jyotisha, at least 3,000 years ago. Nimisha, a blink. Kashta Kala, Muhurta, day and night divisions. Distance units appear in the Shulba Sutras, 2,800 years ago, and later in the Artha Shastra, 2,300 years ago. These were not abstract ideas. They were used in daily life, ritual, astronomy, and administration. Which means, Sayana was using a known measurement system, not inventing one. The calculation. Now, let us calculate what Sayana recorded. Distance, one yojana, approximately nine miles. Time, one nimisha, about 0.21 seconds. Half a nimisha, 0.1056 seconds. So, we calculate. 2,202 yojanas multiplied by 9 miles divided by 0 0.1056 seconds. The result? About 187.670 miles per second, or 302,000 kilometers per second. Modern Science Comparison Modern physics tells us that the speed of light in vacuum is 299,792 kilometers per second. The difference between Sayana's number and modern measurement? Less than 1%. This numerical proximity is not a claim. It is a fact. But what does it mean? Did ancient India measure light? Does this mean ancient Indians conducted experiments like modern scientists? No. But it does mean something equally important. It means advanced time and distance units existed. 
mathematical reasoning was sophisticated, knowledge was preserved through memory and commentary, and cosmological thinking was far more precise than often assumed. Timeline Context Now compare this globally. In ancient India, motion, time, and distance were quantified early. Speed emerged mathematically. In ancient Greece, motion was debated philosophically. Measurement was secondary. In Europe, only in 1676, Ole Romer demonstrated that light has finite speed by observing Jupiter's moon Io. Centuries later, experiments by Fizeau, Foucault, and Michelson made light speed a physical constant. Science does not advance in a straight line. It advances where questions are allowed. Sayana did not know that modern science would echo his number 700 years later and the Rig Vedic poet could never have imagined that his hymn would one day stand at the center of a global scientific discussion. The past is not silent. We are only just learning how to listen.